Okay. All righty. And now I'm going to share my screen. Let me know if you can all see that. Yes. Yes. All righty. Perfect. Well, thank you, everybody. Welcome to this week's Brown Bag Lunch presentation and discussion. Uh, it's our first, uh, well, technically our second one of the spring, but last week we had a little bit of a hiccup. But thank you so much for coming this week. Click. Uh, we're going to do a We Ought Land uh, acknowledgement right now. We acknowledge that Cal Poly Humboldt is on the land of the Weat peoples, which includes the Weat tribe, Bear River Rancheria, and Blue Lake Rancheria. Arcata is known as Gudini, meaning over in the woods or among the redwoods. Weat peoples continue to remain in relationship to these lands through ceremony, culture, and stewardship. Here at Ollie, we believe that learning should never end. And this is a pretty cool picture that we took of the lighthouse tour in Trinidad. That was one of our Ollie classes. Um, and so this is just an outreach for membership. Uh, all classes are designed for lifelong learners 50 and better. Classes are open to everybody 18 and over. And so you can kind of see where we were kind of at pre-pandemic. We had over a thousand members. Uh, but since the pandemic, we kind of dropped off a little bit, but slowly and surely we are getting our membership back. Uh, and part of that is because we're letting people know all of the benefits that they have. So some of the benefits that you have is, uh, so if you get a membership, uh, it runs from July 1st through June 30th. Uh, a membership must be renewed each year for students to remain active. Uh, Primary membership for people 50 and better is $35 annually. Non-members pay an additional charge and are enrolled as space allows. Uh, so here's the actual benefits. So if you're a member, you get lower class fees and first priority registration. Uh, you get a Humboldt, uh, Cal Poly Humboldt email account. Uh, so it's a .edu email address and it gives you so many benefits, discounts and all sorts of stuff online. Uh, you get a discount on the Jack Pass, $60 with enrollment in a fee-based class. You're eligible for course scholarships. Uh, your student discounts are at a, uh, you can have a bunch of different discounts at all the local businesses here, or almost all of them. Uh, you can participate in all these special interest groups. Uh, you get the Humboldt Library Access, the Humboldt, Cal Poly Humboldt Library Access with a student ID card. Uh, and you also, uh, there's a rec center discount too. So if you wanted to go work out at the gym on campus, uh, $73 per semester and $28 for one month or 10 bucks for a single day, uh, you just got to prove that you're enrolled and they have a photo ID. Ollie members can also participate in our Lex Connect groups. Uh, these are online conversations that we have free every uh, Friday night, sorry, Friday morning. <laughs> uh, and Tracy Barnes Priestley, who's going to be our uh, brown bag presenter, I think in a couple of weeks from now. Um, but yeah, there's different topics every week and it's just kind of a fun way to uh, stay in touch with the community. And save the date for the Ollie open house. That is gonna be Saturday, February 11th, one to 3 p.m. at D Street Neighborhood Center, 1301 D Street Arcata. Uh, so that's an opportunity for you to meet instructors. You get to see what kinds of different classes there are. Um, you can renew your membership on site, uh, and it's just a great way to learn a bunch of different stuff about Ollie. Uh, and you can also meet other Ollie students, and it's just a really cool way to come together. So we hope to see you there on February 11th. Uh, and you also at that, uh, that open house, you can actually learn about all of our upcoming spring classes that we have in March. Uh, there's going to be more than 30 in-person classes, field trips, and then a bunch of uh, online classes. I think we got 40 of them so far. So we got tons and tons of classes. And we just wanted to thank the Friends of Ollie. They help out with our brown bag lunch presentations, the Lex Connect groups, and none of that would be possible without your help. So thank you very much. And we also thank you to all the Ollie volunteers. Uh, seriously, you guys help out. You are such a... Uh, foundational support for us and we appreciate your support we we don't know how we would function without y'all and without further ado i'm going to turn it over to jane to introduce our presenters for 
this week's brown bag, Medicare Fraud Protection with Patty Donovan Squeer. Uh, I think I hope I pronounced that correctly. Marianne Morris and Ben Winkler. So I'm going to turn it over to Jane. Hi there and welcome. And I do also want to mention that if you want to see the catalog or, part, or at least part of the catalog, certainly the brown bag lunch presentations for the fall or for the fall. I'm sorry for the spring. I could get in the right season. Feels like fall. Temperatures are falling. Anyway, you can go online to humboldtedu slash ollie slash brown bag, and you should be able to see all the presentations coming up. Um, today, we're delighted to have three presenters. Ben Wink Winker is the HCAT manager of the area one on aging in Eureka, California, representing Humboldt and Del Norte counties. Ben it joined the agency in 2019 as a high cap counselor and assistant manager, taking over the manager position in the beginning of 2020. Marianne Morris has been uh, Redwood Coast Village's office coordinator for two years. She connects village members with volunteers. She formerly worked at Faith Center Church doing media outreach. She has two grown children and a grandson who lives in Denver. Ah, they're getting nice cold temperatures too, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Very cold. Patty Donovan Square is the bookkeeper at Redwood Coast Village since 20, March 2020. She manages member payments, donations, and grants. She previously worked as a bookkeeper for the McKinley Union School District and the Humboldt Senior Resource Center. Welcome to you all, and I believe they'll be speaking in the order of Marianne, and then Patty, and then Ben. All yours, guys. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Mary Ann, as Jane uh, told you, and I'm the office coordinator here, and I answer the phones, and I think that's the best job in the place, actually, because I get to talk to uh, volunteers and members, and they're all great people, and we appreciate them. Um, I wanted to let you know that um, my dad was a pretty good public speaker. And he told me when I was younger that the, um, that the uh, key to giving a decent uh, speech is starting off with a joke. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share my screen. Good. Can you all see it? OK. Um, and now I'm going to have you unmute your microphones because I'm telling a joke and I want to hear you guffawing. <laughs> Already. Okay, Already. so everybody's unmuted. Okay. Welcome again to the Brown Bag Lunch presentations and discussions. And here is my not coming through. Why isn't it? <laughs> Got it. Hi, everybody. Not up the joke. Oh, here's the Everybody. joke. Hi, Marianne. Are you ready? <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah. There was this man, I think his name was Ed, and he was celebrating his 50th wedding anniversary. And a fellow co worker um, pulled him aside and asked him, what his advice was for a long standing marriage. And Ed said, well, on my 25th anniversary, I took my wife to Italy. And then the fellow said, well, what are you gonna to do to celebrate your 50th anniversary? And Ed said, I'm going to go pick her up. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, so you can all mute again. Okay. <laughs> Marianne, you got to unmute now, I think. Yeah, I can. Uh, I go. got it. There we are. So I know you're all expecting um, a presentation about um, Medicare fraud, and it's a very important topic here. 
Um, but I've been asked to do a short presentation on Redwood Coast Village, which is, um, well, I'll tell you what it is. Tell me what you think a village is. I'm not asking you to unmute, so I'm sorry. There's lots of definitions for villages. And one of the most common ones is something like that. At least that's what I thought of when I first heard about the village, were these quaint little buildings on a, in a European city with a nice river flowing through it. Um, and I'm having a little trouble with my advancing for some reason. But anyway, um, this is another village that you might have um, um, pictured when somebody said Redwood Coast Village. But what the village is actually is a community of um, members and generous volunteers who've come together to um, meet the tasks of the members that um, we, that need to be provided. Uh, actually, here it is, where Redwood Coast Village is made up of members and volunteers who come together to provide help for each other with small tasks and the types of everyday jobs a good friend or a neighbor might offer. The village, I'm going to close this little window up here. The village concept arose out of several town meetings um, we had those meetings with our volunteers and also with Area One Agency on Aging and um, that we got a fabulous um, response from people and um, they all gave us a nod that they would like to move forward with starting a village. We are a 501c3 nonprofit and we are a volunteer membership organization. We were established in 2015 by many volunteers' hard work. We then became a program of Area One Aging, Agency on Aging. And in 2017, we became our own nonprofit. The following is a little video I want to show you um, by Village Movement California that reflects the village story. And I'm going to look up here to make sure that you're going to get audio and i don't see that little box anymore dane oh well please tell me if you're getting audio here we go from the day we're born we're aging we are getting audio live aging well means learning to embrace change to adapt to new circumstances discover new resources and continue to act in ways that result in a satisfying life. Staying in charge of our lives as we age is at the heart of Village Movement California, a growing network of over 40 membership organizations called Villages. Created by and for Californians, a village connects people over the age of 50 to the community, programs, support, and expertise they need to continue living lives of purpose and promise in the places they call home. We need each other at every stage of life. But as we get older, our need for social connection and community becomes even more important. Villages are intentional communities that offer their members unlimited opportunities to connect, contribute, continue to learn, and ask for help when needed. As a member, you can stay connected through a wide array of programs that educate, stimulate, and prepare you for what's next in your life. Expressive arts, civic engagement, health and wellness, and life planning are just some of the pursuits we enjoy. In addition to members, volunteers of all ages connect compassionate neighbors of all generations to support each other with friendly visits, technology support, help around the house, and trips to the grocery store. If the pandemic and annual California fires have taught us anything, it's that we are living in a time of uncommon social change. Villages help us navigate this change. Knowing that we belong to a community of people who care for us, making new friends, and having the space to redefine our purpose and our own experience of aging. At Village Movement California, we invite you to join us as we continue to learn, explore, and help each other reinvent aging and reimagine what's next.
Join the nearly 10,000 Californians already participating in their local village. Visit us at Redwood Coast Village. Sorry, we caught, I, I uh, must have pushed something. So, um, some reasons why people would like to um, stay in their own homes and age in place um, rather than live with a relative or perhaps in a nursing facility. They love where they live. And that is a message that we get over and over again about Humboldt County. Um, many have lived here most of their lives and um, know that it's very expensive to move. If you've ever moved, and I'm sure most everybody has at least once, um, it's a big to do. And when you're a senior, um, you often have collected lots of things in your home. And of course, it's a big change to move. And people want to remain independent. Um, that's something that we all fear of letting go of at some point. Um, we like to drive our cars. We like to grocery shop by ourselves. We like to go to the movies, except during the pandemic. And um, all of those things contribute to a healthy lifestyle for a senior. Uh, these are the areas that Redwood Coast Village serves. Um, we're in Eureka, that's our main office, and we're in Old Town. Um, we service uh, as far north as Trinidad and in between Arcata and McKinleyville. And then we go east into Fieldbrook and Blue Lake. Redwood Coast, mm, I, I hit it twice, I think. Redwood Coast Village has over 125 members with 50 active volunteers. And we're always looking for more volunteers. It's a great way to get involved in the community. Here are some examples of requests that are made. There's a picture here of Joy, who is an RCV member. She's standing in the doorway. And Tony is an RCV volunteer. And that's Tanner with him. And this is what Tony has to say about volunteering. I've been walking Joy's dog, Tanner, for an hour once a week for almost two years now. We walk through Sequoia Park by the zoo, and while Tanner plays detective, sniffing and smelling everything in sight, I get to enjoy a walk through a beautiful forest. This is the best volunteer gig I've ever had, and many of our volunteers feel the same way. Roy here is a member volunteer, and Heidi is a, a member. And Roy says, I enjoy being an RCV volunteer driver because it gives me a sense of contributing to my community in a small but meaningful way. Just a bit of my time can help make someone else's life easier and better. And I forgot to give you the um, volunteer hours for Tony, but for Roy, he has logged 44 volunteer hours in 2022. And last but not least, member Marilyn here, who's receiving groceries from our volunteer Lois. Lois says, I strongly believe in community and our responsibilities to others around us. It creates a web that supports us all. I started to volunteer with the village because it just feels right and it adds meaning to my life. So in 2022, Lois logged 13 hours and we appreciate all of them. Here are some of the things volunteers would participate in if they um, would like to help us out. Uh, at first, um, uh, mostly important right now, our volunteer drivers, um, they agree to pick up a member and take them to a medical appointment perhaps, or perhaps grocery shopping. And sometimes it's even to get your hair done but it's convenient and our members appreciate them. We also provide handy person services, help with household chores and light yard work. We provide tech help and computers and phones, and that's been growing lately. People are wanting to get on their computers and use Zoom so that they can stay in contact with their loved ones. And we also provide home visits and pet care. 
as you saw, Tony is a, our pet care um, expert in this area and he loves to play with the dogs so it works out really well for both the member and for Tony. Referrals to other agencies and businesses is something else that we offer. And here are the fees for members. For an individual membership it's $420 annually or if you choose to make a, an installment monthly payment it's $35 and you do that through our website. If you're a two-person household, it's $630 annually with 5250 monthly installment payments. We do have a scholarship uh, here, and we are pleased that we currently have 15 members who receive our services at no cost. Now, at this time, we do have a waiting list for open spots, but it's always good to get an application in and get in line and uh, talk to me on the phone and I can give you um, more details about it. Our membership benefits include six requests per month for an individual and nine requests per month for a two-person household. For the safety of our members and volunteers, everyone has a background check and an orientation. The orientations happen by phone right now since the pandemic, but we may be opening that up before too long to uh, give an in-person orientation. This is basically how the system works, and I just wanted to give you this information um, in case you're thinking about becoming a member or a volunteer. The first thing that happens is the member calls the office with a request. In other words, if they need a ride somewhere, if they want to go shopping, if they have um, smoke detectors that need batteries, there's all sorts of things that um, members have asked request for. We enter the request then into our software system. Then the office sends out emails to volunteers who have expressed a willingness to service that particular type of request. So we do not email all of our volunteers for all of our requests. And a volunteer, if they cannot fill the request, then they just don't respond to the email. It's pretty simple. Volunteers who are willing to fill the request, they email us back, and we then send them a confirmation, which gives them the member's contact information because we ask that the volunteer contact the member within a day to introduce themselves and make any special arrangements, such as the date and time of the request. After the request is filled, the volunteer reports to the office their time and mileage for our records. So why villages now? Well, it is very cost effective. It's $5.83 a request if you want to break it down like that, which is probably cheaper than they could, um, they would pay for a, a ride somewhere or a handyman or a yard worker. The village provides services that reflect and respond to members' needs, and in Humboldt, access to transportation is critical. And it reduces social isolation, the biggest risk factor for early death among older adults. We do have opportunities for partnerships, and currently we are partnering with Area One Agency on Aging, the PACE program, Humboldt Senior Resource Center, and in-home support services. And there goes a big car. We are grateful for their involvement and their support. And now, if you would like to ask me any questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you, or you can put them in the chat and we can answer them at the end. So if you want to unmute and uh, wave, wave your hand, then great. Otherwise, we'll put them in the chat room. All right, that seems to be the, uh, the way we're going to go. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Patty Donovan Squeer, who's going to familiarize you with Medicare scammers and the damage that they do. Patty. Thanks, Marianne. Uh, Mary 
You need to unmute, Patty. Patty, you're muted. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Marianne talked about how Redwood Coast members and volunteers are helping one another. And we'd like to encourage you, uh, if you're interested in becoming a new member or volunteer or donor to contact us. There's just so many ways you can contribute, large or small, helping keep our senior members in their own homes. So we invite you to get involved with us and you can tell your friends to get involved with us. Um, working together, working on a grant from the Senior Medicare Patrol to the Village Movement California, RCV along with two other rural village partners is working with HICAP to talk about the serious problem of Medicare fraud and how it affects us all. Medicare fraud hurts us all. And some steps to protect your Medicare card from being compromised, because when scammers steal from Medicare, they steal from all of us. There's billions of dollars every year are siphoned off by scammers. And what that means is there's less money for the health care that all of us really need. So we ask you to be the first line of defense in protecting your Medicare benefits. Sorry. That we're good. Medicare will not call you unless you have first called them and requested a call back. And keep in mind, they know your card number and they will never ask you to verify what your Medicare card is. So our message today is guard your card. Do not give your Medicare number to anyone who calls you claiming to need it. Don't take advice or offers of medical services from people that come to your house uninvited or approach you in public. It'll be your doctor, not strangers, to prescribe needed services and medical products. Don't, um, it's, it's tempting, but don't respond to TV ads, radio commercials, Facebook and print ads that offer free services. Because as you know, if an offer is too good to be true, it probably is. Listen to your own advice. So. Those TV commercials that tell you to call now to find out how you can increase your Medicare benefits at no cost to you are probably a scam to get your Medicare card number. Medi Original Medicare it does not deliver groceries to you or cover the cost of housekeeping services. So always ask yourself, could this be a scam? Because recognizing the signs of a scam can help you prevent falling victim to one. Scammers are professionals. They don't take days off and neither should you. Scammers pretend to be from an agency or organization you know to gain your trust. Scammers say there's a problem with your Medicare number or account and may ask you to verify your number. Scammers will pressure you to act immediately. Scammers may tell you to pay in a very specific way. They may have you send a Western Union money order to pay for shipping for this free back brace or whatever it is they're encouraging you to buy. If you receive a questionable call, text, or email, hang up and don't respond. Here's a funny little video. I got a call from some scammer who had the nerve to ask for my Medicare number. I was not born yesterday. <laughs> if you get a call Strike. asking for your Medicare or personal information, Delete. shut it down. Nope. Learn more at Medicare.gov slash fraud. So it's funny. Last week, I got a call on my house phone. And the caller ID listed it as a robocall. But I was curious and I answered the phone. It was for my husband who goes by his nickname, Tonio. I asked the caller what it was regarding. The caller said, it's his Medicare provider. Well, right then the red flags went off because I knew it was not a legitimate call 
because we were not expecting a return call from Medicare. And if it was his supplemental insurance company, the caller would have identified themselves with the company name. Neither would identify themselves as a Medicare provider. But to seal the deal on my suspicions, I realized that the caller asked for him by his nickname, not his legal name of Eugene. So just like we learned in the previous video, I shut it down. I hung up the phone and disconnected the call. I'm not gonna fall victim to a scam. But what do you do when it happens to you? The first thing I wanna share with you is to not feel ashamed. Scammers are professionals and they are really good at what they do. So take a breath and reframe and regroup. Maybe call a trusted friend to come up with a strategy for the next steps you can take. <clears throat> you can, call, oh, I'm sorry, stay there. Thanks. You can call the Senior Medicare Patrol, who is uh, our sponsor in this presentation today, and they're at 855-613-7080. And please note, this is not an 800 prefix, but an 855 number. I point this out because I misdialed and the recorded computer message on the other end was really suspicious. I hung up and dialed again and I reached the senior Medicare patrol, so. You have to just be aware, be cautious. They can really help make things right if you suspect fraud has occurred. If you realize you gave out your Medicare number, maybe you received medical supplies that you did not request, back brace, crutches, you name it. If you didn't request it, somebody else ordered it on your behalf. If you were signed up for hospice care, unbeknownst to you. you know, keep in mind that hospice is a covered benefit and it's your doctor who will be the first one to make the referral if that's appropriate. <clears throat> if you are contacted by a debt collection agency for a provider bill you do not owe, a provider you did not see, or services that you did not receive. Maybe you are denied benefits because of a medical condition that you didn't know you had. These are all signs that your Medicare number was compromised. So call to ask questions. Call your doctor's office. You can call Senior Medicare Patrol. And locally, you can call HICAP in Eureka. So we want to remind you, this is information that we shared and we wanna help you to protect your Medicare number. Don't give it out except to your doctor's office or other healthcare professionals. Never give out your Medicare number to a company or a person in exchange for free items, services or special offers. They may not be real. Never let someone else use your Medicare call card. And since it's football season, I have a little analogy that becoming aware of scams is your first and best defense of Medicare fraud. And staying aware is the best offense to protect yourself and others. The positive steps you can take, uh, you're doing so right now by attending today's workshop. You can read up on senior news or other local papers. Um, if you're on Facebook, actually the California Senior Medicare Patrol has a really good Facebook page and they'll post little blurbs, good reminders to ourselves. And most importantly, talk to your family and friends of what's going on. Okay. <clears throat> so we have lots of opportunities for partnerships. Switch. RCV works together with our community partners to better serve all of our senior clients to promote Medicare fraud awareness. The Senior Medicare Patrol chose the Village Movement California to help spread the word to rural California communities. And the Village Movement California enlisted the help of Redwood Coast, 
Kern Valley and Sonoma Valley villages to participate in this outreach effort. Working together with HICAP, an Area One agency on aging in Eureka, there are local experts on all things Medicare, so we can rely on them. We'd like to thank Cal Poly Humboldt and Ollie for hosting today and helping us spread the word. Uh, working with the Salvation Army at the Silver Crest Residential Housing, wanna give a shout out hello to Sarah Mixon and her gang that are watching there on the big screen TV. We've been able to distribute over 2000 pamphlets with the message to protect, detect and report Medicare fraud with the help of Senior Resource Center, Food for People, Blue Lake Rancheria, United Indian Health Services and Access Humboldt, the KZZH radio station helped us to produce radio ads in both Spanish and English. So we'd like to thank all of these partners for their help to extend our reach in the community. You've all been awesome. So we're so appreciated. And next up, we're gonna hand the presentation over to Ben Winker from HICAP. And he's got a few things to talk about and he's gonna also show us how to set up an online account at medicare.gov. Thank you. Unmute, Ben. There yeah. we go. There we go. That is just testing you all. Um, hello. So my name is Ben Winker. I'm the program manager of the Health Insurance Counseling and Advocacy Program. And we help uh, people when they're getting ready for Medicare get signed up. And we help them with their annual drug plan, prescription plan reviews in the fall, and the birthday rule where you can review your supplemental or gap, Medigap plan and your birth date for 60 days. And we help people with appeals as well as we're also senior Medicare patrol liaison. So we also work to uh, solve challenges and issues, get new Medicare cards issued if there's been some kind of fraud and you want to stop that card, much like a credit card. As Patty said, guard your card. As Marianne said, guard your card, like a credit card. Leave it at home. So I'm going to go forward and share a one and a half minute little video about what HICAP is. And then I'm going to go into the senior Medicare patrol PowerPoint to talk about specific fraud issues in the state and country. And then I've got two um, informational sheets at the end to one, as was said just a second ago, to set up your My Medicare account online so you can double check your Medicare summary notices to see if anyone has ordered you nine knee braces or three genetic tests and things like that. So I'll move ahead and share my screen. And it will take questions at the end, if anywhere, or in the chat. Thank you. So wait, there's that. Okay, I'm going to share that now. You having you having a uh, you all right, Ben? What's that? Are you trying to share? Oh, you you're muted. Registered by the California Department. You're good now. Can you restart? start? ICAP, brought to you by It was working, Ben. Area One Agency on Aging. ICAP is an acronym which stands for Health, Insurance, Counseling, and Advocacy Program. ICAP provides free 
unbiased information on Medicare eligibility, rights, and options. HITAP also provides outreach, education, and individual counseling in relation to Medicare coverage and rights, Medicare supplement plans, Medicare Advantage plans, as well as Medicare prescription drug plans and long-term care insurance information. Counseling is provided by paid and volunteer counselors, all of whom are trained and registered by the California Department of Aging. For additional information or assistance in Humble or Del Norte counties, call 707 444 3000. For high cap assistance in another area, call 1 800 434 0222. Thanks for watching. That was a quick explanation of what HICAP does. I'm sorry about that again. And uh, thank you for that. I'm gonna move into the PowerPoint um, presentation for SMP now. And feel free to uh, drop any questions in the chat box if necessary. And so I'm gonna share again. Here we go, share. Can you all see that now? Okay, thanks, Marianne. All right. So Medicare fraud, what you need to know, senior Medicare patrol and the preventing fraud and the uh, U.S. Administration for Community Living Department of Health and Human Services helped put this together. Once again, the SMP um, hotline is 855-613-7080. And you can most definitely reach out to um, the RS RCV program and the HICAP program. The California Health Advocates sponsor the Senior Medicare Patrol currently right now. This is a QR code. Um, so you could take a picture of that with your, with your phone and it will go to the CaliforniaHealthAdvocates.org website. There's a lot of great um, fact sheets on that website and other information. So again, the advocacy and policy, helping people with the rights and protection for Medicare beneficiaries and families, education, website, fact sheets and education workshops and fraud prevention can education, which we're doing now. The SMP program uh, mission is to empower and assist Medicare beneficiaries, families, and caregivers, prevent, detect, and report healthcare fraud errors and abuse through outreach, counseling, and education. It's located in all 50 states plus the territories, and there's a toll-free number if you're looking for your current one, which you've already shared. So again, we just talked about it, um, prevention, education, um, helping people with their complaints and re referrals for fraud cases to investigative entities. The simple message is protect, detect, and report. So if you feel you know you you haven't protected your card and you detect something's wrong, call SMP or the two programs we're talking about right now, so we can help follow it up. Guard your Medicare card. Don't share those numbers. Don't share the new numbers. And if you still have a, a card or you know if somebody has, still has a card with their social security number, Medicare will update that with the current one through Medicare directly. So you wanna always keep track of your medical appointments, either use a calendar or a journal so that you know what you talked about, what you've asked for. Maybe you asked for a brace you did, and you don't want nine to come. Where you can see some of that is your Medicare summary notices, MSNs they're referred to, and they're sent in once, I think a quarter, but when I show you how to create your account, you can see them a lot sooner on your, on your own uh, personal web, care, uh, web account. And the explanation of benefits. Um, so Medicare, um, it'll send beneficiaries and prescription plan explanations. Here's a, a red flag on MSN. So this is a Medicare summary notice. And you might see this when you get those or when you set up your account. You know, is this somebody you know? Uh, somebody that you've worked with before? Is this some place you go to or you know they 
bill out of that site? Did you refer to this? Did you get an appointment on the 25th of December, Christmas Day? Most likely not. Um, and so what, what was provided and how much you might owe? And if it's not something you know or understand, definitely call the 855-613-7080. SMP also has resources. So here's the QR code again. You just take, you take a picture with the lens or the view and sometimes your camera will automatically just detect a website and you might've used this at, at uh, restaurants for the menus during the COVID pandemic. So you can sign up for uh, newsletters from the California Hab Health Advocates at the bottom of the page when you scroll to the bottom of the website, enter your first name, your last name, your web um, address, your email, and what you like um, updates for, um, updates and more fraud alerts, upcoming webinars. They're all free. So then on the website, cahealthadvocates.org, you can see the fraud abuse button. And this is a, uh, an advertisement that I, I've used to advertise in the North Coast Journal. So you might see this in the journal. It's got our high cap information as well on it. So you can call us. And here's four different um, fraud alert uh, newsletters or sheets we can order for any group or pe person that might want them. So you can you know, re reach out to HICAP and uh, Rosanna or I can help order these sheets for you to distribute at your facilities or anywhere you might feel might be beneficial to see these. We also have these out at, out, at outreach events in the, in the summer. Here's another few, um, the cards we can get. Some of them are in Spanish on the back and also Tagalog. And this is a uh, uh, COVID um, vaccination card holder we can order for anybody that wants them. We'll probably order a bunch and then distribute them at events as well. There's also webinars. And some of these, if you go to the California Health Advocates and look up fraud, um, you'll see some of these webinars are upcoming, but some of these have passed, so it'll, it'll be updated soon. And cases, this is the most exciting part to share. So as Marianne and Patty mentioned, there's a lot of uh, fraud in the news, uh, watching news uh, TV commercials and on the phone and um, people at places like Walmart or in front of other um, facilities that might serve people. Billion issues is quite, a, quite many, I believe this is thousands um, in, in California um, or 1500, I'm not quite sure, but there's a lot of billion issues. Deceptive hospice enrollments, so sometimes people will get accidentally or inadvertently signed up for hospice and they won't know until they go to the uh, pharmacist and then the pharmacist will say, I can't serve you here because you're on hospice. And they didn't understand that was gonna happen or they didn't literally know that that was happened. And then a lot of people will call high cap and we can get them re-enrolled in their prescription drug plan and reinstated hopefully quickly into their supplement plan. But there's a lot of deceptive home healthcare enrollments coronavirus scams, free tests with your Medicare card. Well, you don't need that. You just call the government and they'll ship you tests. There's also DME, to, uh, uh, durable medical equipment, brace scams. You might have ordered one, but you got nine or you were just billed for nine and never got any. You wanna pay attention to your Medicare summary notices. Same with genetic tests, that's on the rise. Medicare plans, Medicare Advantage plans and agents. You might get a call promising, as, as you heard, free services, free extra benefits, free food delivery, free transportation. And a lot of that's just not available in Hubble or Delano counties. So if you do get in, um, enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan, you get a trial a year. We can help you get out of that before the year ends at HICAP. Medicare uh, card phone scams, they're just trying to get your card number to do all kinds of things with it. Medicare prescription drug um, cases, you know, and the Medicare supplement scams, phone scams and miscellaneous. Some of these double up, but you'll see what um, is the main ones. And again, we just talked about these um, Medicare Part C as advantage plans and drug plan communication. Deceptive hospice enrollment, billing issues, card scams, genetic and brace scams, as I said. And they, they do cold calls and TV ads that offer attractive benefits. A lot of those are getting curtailed because Congress has got involved to stop some of the inadvertent enrollments where people get things they don't 
really need or want. Um, and then always look at your um, your mailings. Um, some look official, some of the mailings look official, but they have a disclaimer at the bottom saying not available in all areas. And that's also on TV, not available in all areas. So feel free to give us a call. This is the 800 number for the state of California. So that would route you to the closest high cap program, the 434-0222. That number will, you know, if you're in Humboldt County, it will automatically route you to the high, our local high cap program. And we can set up an appointment to go over any mailings, documents, enrollment problems you have. Hospice fraud alert is a big thing in, in uh, the state of California, but luckily not in Humboldt County. We don't see that too often. And we have a wonderful nonprofit um, hospice uh, program that runs in Humboldt County. So we're dependent upon them to help us with and, then, and help everyone with uh, hospice. In 2021, uh, the Department of Justice brought Texas hospice CEO was sentenced for $150 million for healthcare fraud and money laundering, money laundering schemes. And so they directed employees to admit, admit unqualified parent, uh, patients to hospice or home health. And so again, they were getting services they didn't need or didn't want. And, um, and they often would lie to patients telling them they had months to live. And the Department of Justice brought another case, uh, uh, found another uh, case guilty for a hospice CEO, healthcare fraud. And he billed for Medicare and Medicaid services that weren't need, needed or they didn't actually qualify for hospice. Um, we can't play this, but 16 people are charged in San Bernardino County um, recently for hospice, again, fraud. And then billing complaints, you want to pay attention to your MSN numbers, as, all, as we showed in the MSN slide. Um, the provider's billing me, but my MSN shows I have zero patient responsibility. If you feel like you don't have responsibility for these things, or it's a, a preventative service through Medicare, which is free, but you're getting billed for it, please call our local high cap office and one of our counselors can help you walk through it and help rectify or appeal the inadvertent billing service. Uh, beneficiary son reports. Again, you can read this facility where my dad resides was on COVID lockdown, but he, he had monthly earwax removal that was not possible. So you wanna call us so we can help rectify that inadvertent billing. And the neurologist in the next one uh, saw, the patient saw the neurologist twice but it shows multiple visits that did not occur. And so we can help with appeals and um, that billing. There's cold calls offering plastic Medicare cards. That's not real. They really want your number to really bill Medicare for services that you might not receive. And uh, your med your, we, can, we can help stop your Medicare card and issue a new one as well through a high cap program. Genetic test and genetic testing, we talked about that. Unless you're talking to your doctor directly and you have a good relationship with that person, another doctor shouldn't order you a genetic test or, your, or a new card. So don't share your number, date of birth, anything, please, with uh, people on the phone. Back brace fraud alerts, be careful of those. Knee braces are another one. If somebody out of state charges you inadvertently, it probably is not correct, so call us. Here's two more in 2021, we'll update them soon. Um, two Montana nurse practitioners frauded Medicare $18 million um, and five individuals were charged for roles in $65 million nationwide conspiracy to defraud, to defraud the federal healthcare programs. So you can see often they talk about Medicare um, having challenges or, or getting a lot of fraud against it. And these add up almost um, $85 million in fraudulent charges that the government's trying to claw back from these people um, that, that doesn't go to help regular Medicare people. COVID complaints, luckily we're getting towards the end of the COVID uh, protocol, so I, I'm excited about that. But be careful of vac uh, fake vaccination centers. And luckily in Humboldt County, our advertising through the Lost Coast Outpost, North Coast Journal, Senior News, or uh, Mad, Mad River um, um, out, Outlet, Mad River uh, Newspaper, and a red redheaded, they'll tell you about things coming up and you can always call ahead to see if they're real. There's also non-healthcare uh, programs where, and this is something where the Federal Trade Commission wants you to call them. If you get um, pretending people calling you, pretending to be government officials or predatory lenders, 
romantic interests, your grandson's in jail, lottery sweepstakes investments, online shopping, purchases were not delivered, phony websites in COVID. Call um, the HICAP program, the Fraud SMP program, or FTC. And if you listen to KTSU on the radio, you might hear of the Office of, Inter uh, in Investigative Gen Office of Internal Gen uh, Government, and they'll help with fraud as well. And again, we do um, presentations, fraud alerts, newsletters, billing research. We help with fraud, fraudulent billing, and ref we refer it to um, investigation. So that's it for the um, slideshow. Let's see if I can stop it. Stop the slideshow. Great. And I'll go through a, some of these uh, questions in the website, uh, in the chat before I share the um, creation of the program, but Jane shared, what do you know about the REACH program that Patty Harvey write, wrote about in the Time Standard, my word, on January 14, 2024? Uh, are we doing anything to address this? Um, at this point, we are um, doing presentations to talk about it. Um, there's a lot of expansion of Medi-Cal into California to take on the Medigap and um, drug prescription support for eligible Medicare recipients. So there's a lot of push to coordinate Medi-Cal and Medicare so that it saves people money with low income subsidies or extra help. So we're working on um, researching more about the REACH program and we'll be working on articles coming up this spring. And the Medicare Advantage, Jane also asks, Medicare Advantage plans have been advertised on TV and through local presentations as a great deal. Many have been from real companies, but some are very deceptive in terms of the information they don't give you about the limits of their programs with traditional Medicare Advantage that you lose. Do you address these issues? We do help a lot of Medicare people that have signed up for Medicare Advantage. If they're in their trial period, they can unenroll in those programs. We can re-enroll re them in a drug plan and a supplement plan and uh, hopefully get them out of that program and save them money. For some people, it's a great plan. It's a great way to save money. But after your first year, it's hard to get a supplement plan or a gap plan because then the insurance agents can in, uh, look at your health screen, your health re, uh, records and they can call um, health, scare, health records uh, review and they can see if you had some issue and may, they, they may not uh, sign you up again or renew your supplement plan. So that's a danger. You wanna keep your supplement plan and your drug plan. And original Medicare works really well in Humboldt County and a Medicare Advantage plan has limitations and higher out-of-pocket costs you know, generally, uh, potentially, um, you might see somebody that's out of network and they're going to charge you more than you would with the original Medicare. So you want to be careful about Medicare Advantage plans at, at this current time. Though, again, they do work for some people that are really healthy and take no prescriptions. Um, it can lower the costs of Medicare access. And for some people, it is a way to get um, a supplement plan benefit, although um, it's not always the best. You might want to double check with us before you sign up, um, call HICAP and set up an appointment. We'll talk about and review the differences and try to weigh the costs, long-term costs versus short-term costs of both programs and how Medicare, original Medicare will follow you throughout the country. And potentially Medicare Advantage might just be a network. So it might just be Providence and just here in this area. So um, please do double check with HICAP counselors before you sign up or after you sign up to do a review. And anyone coming into Medicare, coming to 65, or somebody that's been disabled 25 months, automatically gets enrolled in Medicare after the 25th month. And so if you get that card in the mail, you get some information, new to Medicare card, Medicare, and you booklet, feel free to call us at HICAP at 707-444-3300. Three thousand, and that's for our local high cap number in Humboldt and Del Norte counties. So we would love to help you with a a a, a, um, a um, phone call, pres uh, uh, interview, uh, education presentation. We can also do it in person in certain areas of our county. So feel free to give us a call if you're new to Medicare or want to know more for a family member about Medicare and how it works. And I did type in this. Oh. Oh, geez, I didn't do that correctly. Um, let's let's see. I'm going to type in this for everyone. The high cap number is 
3,000. That's the high cap number, and I just sent it in. And now I'm going to share a um, create your account document. And now I just put it in the chat. So if you open up the chat box, it's at the bottom ribbon of this presentation. Then you can open it up, and you can I'll open it up, and then I'll try to share a screen. So let me do that, um, and that way we can go over this. Let me see if I can. Share this sheet. No. I am not. Oh, there it is. I'm so sorry. There it is. All right. So do you see a uh, create an account for a personalized Medicare plan finder experience? This is a wonderful way to uh, create an account online that you can review the plans you're signed up for. It'll show you what prescription plan you have. It'll show you what supplement plan you have. If you're, if you're fully uh, dual eligible for Medicare and Medi-Cal, it'll show you a full dual eligible, a fully eligible, or it'll show you if a partial um, low income subsidy. So it's a great way to see what, you're, what you have. You can uh, review and edit your drug list on it. You find plans and you say, I wanna look at my drug list. It'll actually save all the prescriptions that you've picked up in the past year and it will populate it. So if those things change when you're coming up to October and um, the open enrollment review, you can actually update your prescription plan and then review the plan. And so you can review all the plans available in our area and that becomes available because you use your zip code. And then you can compare your current plan with the lowest cost plan and you always want to look at the lowest cost price plus the premium, lowest cost drugs and premium. So it shows you all the co-pays along with the premium and how much it'll be per month. And you can literally um, enroll in the plan that's a better plan for you. They'll send you a new card, new information packet, and your old plan is automatically dropped on December 31st. And a new plan takes effect January 1st. So you can compare, again, the benefits and costs. And then you, uh, once you create your own plan, uh, account by going to medicare.gov, and then um, it'll say up in the right-hand corner, it'll say create an account. You'll need to set up a username, something you write down in black ink on the safest place you can remember to save this. Then you write down your password in black ink. Again, under if it's under cap, if it's under uh, scored or capitalized, you know highlight that so you remember how to sign back in. Um, you'll enter your um, you know, last name, date of birth, current address with zip code. Uh, and then you'll, you'll say part A and part B coverage start date. And then you'll create a username and password. And then um, if you forget your account uh, password or username, you can review that and hit, I forgot my password or I forgot my username and it'll help you recreate that. We can help you recreate this plan once you've got your Medicare A and B. So if you call us at high cap at 4443000, we can have a counselor help you set up a My Medicare account. And it's really helpful for, again, reviewing your Medicare summary notices, seeing what you're being charged for, and then reviewing um, that so you're very aware of that. So that's in the chat. So you can download that, print it out for home, or save it as a PDF somewhere where you save your downloads and then review that at some point. So I'm going to shop, well, look at chat real quick and see if. Um, Yes, it's for the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services at the very bottom, it's CMS, and it's one of their product number documents. It is a good website. Um, I hate to say um, it's a government website, so you wanna trust your government because many of you remember when they said, um, you can count on your government, or I think they said in a different word and it was, it was hilarity ensued. Um, but <laughs> you can trust this website. And we do use it and we do use it every year for the drug plan reviews for people so we can help log in with them see what they have update their drug list and enroll them in a new plan um, we consider it very safe and um, secure um, but as you know um, there's limitations to everything so that is a great question jane so thank you and then i'm going to add one more to the um i'm going to see if i can do this one i'm going to change one but this 
I'm going to put this in the chat box as well. Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't want this one. I want to put the Medicare uh, preventative. There's Medicare covered preventative services. And let's see if I could sh um, share. Can you all see this Medicare covered uh, preventative service? Yes. Can you okay. make it bigger? Yeah, let me try it. Let me see. Yes. Uh, and then let me um, try to make it a little bigger. Oh, no, can't do that. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I'm going to try one more time. Okay. So this is Medicare covered preventative services. So these are free services that you are eligible for if you're on Medicare. And this is a great way to stay in touch with your doctor. It's a great way to, you know, a lesson isolation. It's a great way to have communications with your doctor and create that good rapport and relationship with your doctor. Um, so you can, you know, 65, you get a welcome to Medicare physical exam. And it's a one-time service, but um, within the first year, you can do it. Call up your doctor, call up your provider and ask for that. And they'll talk about everything and uh, look into where you're sitting, you know, look at your heart, you know, two different things. Um, just check in with you. That's a great thing to start. Then you can also do the annual wellness visit. So again, you want to say it's touch with your doctors. So they're aware of any changes in your health or concerns you might have. You're important. You know, it's important you voice your concerns. Breast cancer screening is free. You know, so once every 12 years, 12 months, please do it. It's, it's important. Heart disease screening. So you get your lab results from your blood tests. Um, osteoporosis. Uh, screening. Right. <laughs> Osteoporosis. Paralysis. Paralysis. And so that's checking your bone density. So you want to do that and make sure you're getting the calcium and, and getting involved in the things you can to keep your bones healthy and keep your bones strong. Diabetes screening, colon cancer screening. This is these are great things to check in on yourself. Um, find out where you're at and feel if you know if you're healthy. And if you're not, some of these things can help alleviate issues right away while they're doing the screening. Vaccination, the pneumonia shot, the flu shot, the um, hepatitis B shot, the shingle shot is something that you should be aware of. That's free now for anyone in um, website, uh, anyone um, over 65 in a Medicare. Smoking cessation, there's classes to help with smoking, stopping smoking, cervical cancer screenings, prostate cancer screenings, uh, nutritional therapy, help you how to eat better and, and work on you know other issues of your of your of eating habits. Um, so those are covered without a deductible. And oh, that's a, we've updated that, but I think this is all still true for the 2021 and 2022. So there is some things with coinsurance or deductibles, glaucoma screening. So there's a small deductible for that, colon cancer screening, different, a different one. That's the one where you have the die. Um, some other um, counseling sessions do might have a copay, and some of the prostate cancers. Um, after you pay your part to be deductible. So you can see some of the screens there. So I'll stop that. So I put both of those information, those informational sheets um, in the, the web into the chat and you can download those and save those. So you, I believe you uh, right click and then you can download them to your computer or your um, um, tablet. And uh, Bob Oswell said the website uses SSLL secured sockets link, which means info sent back and forth between you and the site is encrypted. And encryption is an important thing for um, keeping everything safe for um, the, um, you're using your website and entering your personal information. And I'll stop right there and close that. I believe I stopped sharing. Does anyone have any questions? about the Redwood Coast Village program, about the HICAP program, senior Medicare patrol, or creating your My Medicare account. <laughs> I'll, try, I'll try everything. <laughs> I'll wait till there's questions. If, I, if Jane sees any hands raised, that would be great. And it's great to learn how to do these things on the bottom of the app. Um, so you can raise your hand and have reactions and do all kinds of fun things. Please feel free to ask any questions you may have. I seem to be the only one doing this. Yes, so jump right in. <laughs> I would love to have others. I, I, I will add one. I hear from providers 
complaints that Medicare payments have been cut enough to cause many to either drop Medicare patients or join up with hospitals or have to because they can't afford to stay in private practice. Do you know anything about that and how many providers uh, are still, uh, what percentage of providers are still taking uh, traditional Medicare? And, and is this problem associated with Medicare Advantage also, or just with Medicare regulation? You know, so, the, so Humboldt County and Delaware County have challenges with providers, primary care physicians, PCPs, and also um, specialists and referrals out of the area. So we do have a challenge with getting providers um, up in Humboldt County um, currently. Um, the urgent care, um, office in Eureka, right next to uh, General Hospital, has a list you can request or call for, or I'm not sure if it's on their website, for providers open spots. Some of the people I know um, offhand are, are Scotia Bluffs Health Clinic have some providers, um, but it is challenging. A lot of people on uh, that had open door providers were uh, uh, enrolled in pro uh, provide, uh, Medicare Advantage plans, and open door um, health clinics will not bill Medicare Advantage. So if you want to continue going to open door, you have a you have a primary affair, a care physician or a nurse practitioner you work with. If it's within one year and you've been inadvertently signed up for Medicare Advantage, we can help you drop out of that program and get back with those providers. Um, it is challenging finding those providers. So look, you know, use your family connections. If you have somebody that's already seen a provider, lean on that provider to admit you. So if you have a, a daughter or a sister or brother that go to a certain provider and you want one and you don't have one, call them up and say, you are treating my sister, you're treating my brother, you're treating my mother. Can I get on in your list or at least get in the wait list? Um, so it is daunting and challenging. Um, um, we have troubles with that as well. And we do not have a back door for that, but we can help work with you and try to help you find open um, providers in the area. So feel free to call HICAP for any of those um, concerns. Um, any other questions or concerns, Jane, or anybody else? What you're saying, Ben, is that if you can contact urgent care, is that part of St. Joseph's Providence? No, it was, it's St. Urgent Care. Um, it's I believe it's on 23rd Street, and it's somewhere that you should all be aware of. Uh, if you do have, um, you can't get into your provider right away. Urgent care is a provider of, of uh, more expediency, and they do bill outside of Medicare and, and regular health care. But sometimes it's lower cost than you can get served sooner. Um, it's an important health care, uh, urgent care service provider. And you'll start, I think you're going to start reading about it in the paper and other areas where people are referring to urgent cares. And urgent cares are growing. So if you're not in network at Mad River, um, you might go to urgent care first. And if you're not in network at Providence, but you have an urgent need mm -hmm. and you're in Eureka, you might go to urgent care first. But they do collect um, a list of open, uh, at least a wait lists that are open for care providers and uh, specialists. So they're a good resource outside of um, your current um, uh, Okay, so I see again, urgent care does not accept Medi-Cal but they do charge a lot less than um, emergency room services. So if it's a sprained ankle um, and you can't, you don't need to go to emerge, uh, emergency services where they'll cost you a lot out of pocket, go to urgent care first. That's pretty much all I'm saying. And they have, uh, they do update their years list yearly to care for with primary care physicians. So if you have, let yeah. me clarify, if, if you have Medicare Advantage, the only hospital where our providers are accepted into Medicare Advantage is Providence St. Joe's. You can't go to Mad River. You can't go to Open Door. Uh, Open Door will not bill Medicare Advantage. I know that for a fact. Uh, what does uh, that mean? You have to pay it. You yeah. If you if you're Open Door, um, if you're well, if you sign up for Medicare Advantage, you can't go to Open Door, or you have to pay out of pocket. It's not in their program. So Medicare will not bill Medicare Advantage. They'll bill you directly. If you have a, a Medicare Advantage, the local networked uh, provider is Providence only in this area. And I'm not sure, honestly, uh, how Medicare, uh, Mad River bills Medicare Advantage or if they bill Medicare Advantage. 
you would have to talk to the billing department of Medicare, Mad River Hospital chain to see if they bill Medicare Advantage. I mean, Providence, so, Providence so we, is the we only don't know. network. You, so you have to go to Providence if you want to get health care under Medicare Advantage. Is that what that boils down to? Under Medicare Advantage, if you're a person with that plan, you have to go to the network provider, which is Humble, in Humble County is Providence only. So yes, and, Medicare. and are people understanding this when they're signing up for Medicare Advantage? Because I've heard they don't discuss any of this at these Medicare Advantage presentations that they've been having for months uh, at local mot hotels or motels. And that when you question them about it, they get very upset. Because <laughs> <laughs> yes, they would. In the past, um, well, the past administration loosened the marketing guidelines for Medicare Advantage. And previously, they weren't allowed to sit outside educational uh, in educational presentations. And now they're allowed to do a little bit more hard marketing. So I've seen them in front of in the table at Walmart talking about United Healthcare Medicare Advantage plans. Um, they are is allowed that, to do a, is, is that something that we can address politically? through A1AA and basically if that was done by executive order which I understand the REACH program also which is just starting see the REACH program if any of you have read Patty Harvey's article that was on January 14th uh, in the Mad River Union uh, under Medicare uh, Advantage they have to spend 85 percent of the dollars that they receive on the patients, although they find ways around it, but basically they have to apply 85% of every dollar they receive. Um, whereas under this new pro, uh, REACH program, they only have to, uh, they can keep up to 45% apparently of the money they get and, and skimp, skimp payment to you. And if, if you're, um, doctor accepts the REACH program and participates in it, you automatically, and, and you stay with that doctor, you automatically get off Medicare and go into that program without you even knowing about it. So you need to be aware this is a kind of a fraud in reality, and it was done by executive order under the prior administration. So I'm wondering whether Area 1 on Aging is doing anything about this to inform people about this program and the dangers of this program, Patty Harvey and her buddy are, are working very hard to try to let people know. But it sounds to me like we need to actively be working uh, through the Senior Resource Center and A1AA to um, inform people yeah. and maybe have some sort of uh, discussion with Huffman and others who are at the federal yeah. level to try to get this executive order that's established that program uh, eliminated, removed. Anyway, that's yeah. my pitch for the day. Sorry about that, everybody, yeah. if you want, didn't want to hear about that. <laughs> but um, it's, we had a pretty, it, hmm? it's, it's true. It's true, Jane. I mean, we need to work on it. As counselors for HICAP, it's hard, we're unbiased, so we're not um, legislatively pushing this, but we do need. Um, Executive Director, Area One Agents and Aging, the Senior Resource Center, and groups like Patty and I believe Wendy Ring was the other one that wrote an article uh, a couple months ago about the program. And so we do need to get something started um, with our local representatives. And the fact is, the, our representatives uh, in Congress have helped, and the Senate have always, have already helped stop some of the fraudulent marketing, saying all these benefits you can have. So the Joe Namath commercials and Jimmy Walker commercials have been pulled back quite a bit because they're misleading and deceptive in that regard. But we do need a legislative and advocacy to start and we'll be um, talking with people and I'd love for this conversation to grow into a greater one. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see you actively working on this and advocating it for it because as, as she said in our article, um, private entities are chiseling away at Medicare as we know it. And basically, the current projection is it will be eliminated and privatized by 2030. Uh, we're all going to be hopefully still alive and needing Medicare traditional by then uh, and want the option to go to our current local doctors and go to Mad River Hospital and, and so forth. 
open door because a lot of us have been only able to get coverage through open door because most of the private practices have been decimated and yeah. the docs have had to go into Providence. Anyway, sorry if I'm kind of getting a bit of advocacy here, but ah, sorry. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> With some of our programs, we can go so far, but we need community members, you know, to really step up and make this happen. And so, well, for, um, yeah, first yeah. they have to know about it, though. Yeah. Then, and you, and and that's why I'm saying I think you need to do a little advocacy uh, or raise the issues with people so that they have some awareness. Because as far as I'm concerned, in many cases, the Advantage programs have been a scam. And Reach sounds like it's even more of a scam particularly if you can just get dumped out of Medicare, traditional yep. Medicare. And people have got to know in time to get back into Medi uh, traditional Medicare, because if they do pass the one year and they can't, yeah, I'll let you get in, Patty, in a minute. Yep. <laughs> if they do pass the one year, then when they try to get coverage again uh, with secondary, they, one, don't have to accept you. And two, if they do accept you, it can be substantially more costly. So anyway, Patty, your turn. Uh, thanks, Jane. I was just going to suggest perhaps uh, reaching out to Patty and Wendy Ring to talk about the REACH program could be another Ollie talk. They're pretty experienced in advocating for changes in awareness. So they're probably our local experts. Patty and Wendy Ring, is that who you said? The names that you used was Wendy Ring. And the author of your article was Patty. And Harvey. I think she with Medicare Patty Harvey. for All. Yeah, it's Patty Harvey. Yeah. And I think her group might be called Medicare for All. Okay, thank you. Yeah, perhaps we they would have do them a... give a talk, but it's become more urgent. And the talk they gave did not talk about reach at the time. Yeah. So reach out. I will do that. I, I'll ask what I do. <laughs> are, are those of you who are here interested in that? Um, if you are, let me know. I'd appreciate it. Okay, I know you are. <laughs> Jan Janina, yes. Bob, anybody else? Want to fess up? Yes. David? Okay, I'll try to set it up. The earliest I can set it up for is is in the summer. So that'll be a little late, but at least we can do a little more damage here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm right. sorry, I'm not always quiet about things. <laughs> well, thank you very much for attending today. Redwood Coast Village is ready to sign off if there's nothing else. Uh, we appreciated talking to you all today and talking about Medicare fraud and Give ourselves a pat on the back because we're all getting smarter together. Yeah, and thank you so much for presenting. That was very, very helpful. And we look forward to seeing you again uh, next week. You can go and sign up uh, for the next programs on OLLI at, as I said, humboldt.edu slash OLLI. And go to the Brown Bag Lunch Program. You'll see the uh, upcoming ones and you should be getting your catalog in the next couple of weeks and don't forget about the uh, open house on the 11th of February at D Street uh, Community Center in Arcata. Um, parking can be a little interesting. You can park on the street in that area but and, and you can park behind the center. You can park on the street, what is that, 14th? Is that 14th Street I think? Uh, and then just walk across because there's no direct entry from 14th Street into the community center parking lot. You have to go up a couple of streets, turn right, then turn right again and on the next uh, street and, and you'll get to the community center. So it's a little bizarre to get to, but it's it's landlocked. <laughs> but you can park on 14th Street as well as obviously in the parking lots behind and, and in front of the D Street Community Center. And of course, I'm sure we'll be wanting you to wear your masks or suggest that you do so because COVID really hasn't gone away. So we hope to see you then. Thanks so much. Thanks, all of you. Thank you. Thank you Thanks so much. Thanks all everybody. for coming. Thanks, everybody.
Have a great day. Thank you. And you can find a, a recording of this brown bag presentation online in their video archive, usually Wednesday or Thursday videos go up. Thank you, Dane. Thank you, all of you, for Thank coming you. and for presenting. Thank you. Doing Thanks, the work Shirley. you're doing is very, very important. Thank Redwood so Coast much. Village is a wonderful program. And yes. we appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Thanks.